Centuries ago, in the heart of Mongolia, a child was born whose very existence altered the course of human history. What made this child a symbol of ultimate power? Why did the greatest empire of its time, China, construct a colossal wall, a wall so immense it stands to this day, all to counter the might of one man? To discover how a boy named Temujin rose to become the emperor of the largest land empire in history, stay with us until the end of this video. This is Rapid Rewinds, where today, we bring you the story of the Khan of Khans, Chungay's Khan. Born in 1162 near the Baikal Lake in Mongolia, Temujin came into the world clutching a blood clot, a sign that he was born to be a great leader. But the reality was far from prophetic. When Temujin was nine years old, a rival tribe known as the Tatars poisoned his father Yusujii, forcing him, his mother, and his siblings into a life of ostracism, fighting for survival in the harsh Mongolian wilderness. Young Temujin took charge of his family, hunting and foraging to keep them alive. But survival came at a steep price. When food was scarce, a violent confrontation with his half-brother Bector, driven by desperation and the primal need to lead and provide for the family, led Timujin to kill him. This ruthless decision marked the beginning of his relentless rise to power, showcasing his willingness to do whatever it took to ensure the survival and supremacy of his kin. Amidst the fierce tribal clashes in Mongolia, Timujin fell into the hands of the Taikia tribe, who enslaved him to block his path to his father's leadership role. This captivity compounded the difficulties he faced, especially after his family had been ostracized by their own clan. Yet, in time, Temujin found his way to freedom, reportedly with the help of a compassionate jailer or a family member from within the Taikiyat. There are tales that a young member of the tribe, empathizing with his situation, aided him in removing his kang, enabling his escape. After these constant years of struggle, a pivotal moment came into Temujin's life at the age of 16 when he got married to Borte, a marriage arranged by his father Yusujii before his death, and it was meant to secure an alliance with the Angerat tribe, to which Borte belonged. The marriage provided Temujin with a companion who would become a trusted advisor and loyal partner, and it marked the beginning of his journey from a life of destitution to one of leadership and conquest. But time demanded a leader who can face his worst fears. After three years in their marriage, his beloved wife Borte was kidnapped by a rival tribe, igniting a flame of vengeance in his heart. In a world where alliances were as shifting as the sands of the Gobi, Temujin forged strategic partnerships with powerful tribal leaders and his father's old allies, like Jamukha and Togrul, the Khan of the Karates. With their aid, he launched a daring rescue, retrieving Borte and solidifying his reputation as a leader not to be trifled with. With these alliances, Temujin began to consolidate power. He started to gain a reputation as a leader and warrior, attracting a growing number of followers. Yet, once more, time put Temujin to the test. He and Jamukha had a falling out, which led to a civil war among the Mongol tribes. Temujin faced off against a coalition of tribes led by Jamukha and Togrul. This conflict was marked by several battles, as both sought to become the supreme ruler of the Mongolian plateau. The victory in this battle was a turning point for Temujin. Temujin introduced a series of military reforms, including the incorporation of enemies into his own forces, the promotion of soldiers based on merit rather than family ties, and the organization of his army into decimal units. Over time, through both diplomacy and force, Temujin succeeded in unifying the Mongol tribes under his leadership. He was a charismatic leader who enacted laws and reformed the social structure of the tribes, laying the groundwork for the future Mongol Empire. In 1206, after a significant victory against the Naimans, another powerful tribe, Temujin called the Koroltai, which was a council of Mongol chiefs. During this assembly, he was proclaimed Chungay's Khan, which means universal ruler, marking the official start of the Mongol Empire under his rule. His appetite for expansion was insatiable. Chungay's Khan led his troops into a dizzying number of campaigns, leaving behind a trail of conquered lands. 
With a unified Mongol army behind him, Chungay's Khan eyed the formidable Western Xia dynasty for his next conquest. Their robust defenses promised a thrilling challenge. Undeterred, Chungay's led his forces with a blend of ferocious attacks and strategic genius, occasionally sprinkling in acts of unexpected kindness. The Western Xia's resistance fell piece by piece, marking the beginning of Chungay's Khan's legendary sweep across Asia. But Chungay's Khan was more than a conqueror, he was a tactical genius. His strategies like the false retreat and the use of psychological warfare struck terror into the hearts of his enemies. His spy network was unparalleled, gathering intelligence that was crucial for his invasions. In the early 1210s, Chungay's Khan targeted the wealthy Jin dynasty in northern China. By 1215, his forces had stormed the capital, Zhangdu. This victory wasn't just a battle win, it shifted power in East Asia. The Jin fled south, and the Mongols, once simple steppe tribes, became the region's new power. As the world grappled with the Mongols' swift conquest in East Asia, Chungay's Khan turned his ambitions westward. The vast Khwarezm Empire, stretching over what is now Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and parts of Iran and Afghanistan, made the grave error of provoking Chungay's Khan by killing his trade envoy. The Mongol leader responded with a vengeance. Between 1219 and 1225, he led a series of military campaigns marked by strategic brilliance and ruthless aggression, crushing the Khwarezm Empire. This sent a stark warning to all. The Mongol Empire was a formidable force with an extensive reach. Throughout history, the stories of great leaders often culminate in dramatic finales, and Chungay's Khan's story is no exception. In the year 1227, amid the rugged terrain of the Western Xia campaign, the legendary Mongol conqueror faced his untimely end. Cloaked in the mist of time, the true nature of his death is a puzzle. Some say he fell from his horse in battle, others suggest he was assassinated, and some even believe he was thrown off his horse by a vengeful spirit. The man who seemed larger than life had met an end as enigmatic as his life had been. His vision and conquest had set the stage for an empire that would flourish under his heirs, cementing his legacy as a figure whose influence would stretch from the Pacific Ocean to the borders of Europe. After Chungay's Khan's death, his son Ojidi Khan took over and pushed the Mongol Empire to greater heights. He finished conquering China and then moved the Mongol armies into Europe. By the 1230s, they had conquered Russian territories and by the 1240s, their presence was felt as far as Hungary and Poland, sending a wave of fear through European lands. His empire was divided into four khanates, each ruled by his descendants. The Yuan dynasty in China, Mongolia, and Korea was led by his grandson Kublai Khan. Central Asia's Shagatai Khanate bore the name of Chungay's Khan's second son. The Ilkhanate, under Hulagu Khan, spanned the Middle East, while the Golden Horde, led by Bata Khan, stretched across Russia and Eastern Europe. These four realms upheld Chungay's Khan's legacy, each contributing to the historical tapestry of their regions. The secrecy surrounding Chungay's Khan extends to his final resting place. According to legend, his funeral procession killed anyone who crossed their path to keep the location a secret. The burial party even killed themselves to protect the grave's location, ensuring it remained hidden for eternity. To this day, the site remains undiscovered, lost somewhere in the mountains of Mongolia. Some say his grave is on Burhan Khaldun, the sacred mountain, but no one knows for sure. It's a mystery that adds another layer to the mystique of this extraordinary man. The world as we know it would be a different place without Chungay's Khan. It's been estimated that he killed so many people that he effectively reduced the world's carbon footprint. On the flip side, his empire promoted the exchange of goods, knowledge, and cultures between the East and West. Shockingly, studies suggest that one in 200 men alive today are descendants of Chungay's Khan. His legacy is not just in the past, it lives on in our genes, in modern military strategy, and even in the way nations are governed. Chungay's Khan was an innovator both on and off the battlefield. He revolutionized his army by doing away with traditional tribal affiliations, assigning positions based on merit. He even established a sophisticated postal system, known as the Yam, with mounted couriers and relay stations. And let's not forget the Yasa, 
a code of laws that laid the foundation for his governance. As we reflect on the life of Chungay's Khan, it's not just the vast empire or the great battles that stand out. It's also the wisdom he imparted. Remember this profound saying attributed to him, if you're afraid, don't do it. If you're doing it, don't be afraid. This is Rapid Rewind signing off. Remember, legends never fade, they just get retold. Stay tuned for the next one.